Hey everyone, it's Jenny at JC Cards. Today I'm sharing three projects, all of which use WOW Fab Foils with WOW Bonding Powder. You use the bonding powder in the same way that you use any embossing powder and it creates a sticky surface on which you can adhere the foils to create these awesome looks that you see here. Now the look you get can be a little distressed but I'm going to share a couple of tips I found when playing around with this that will help you when you create your projects in this way. So first off, you're going to need a heat gun, you're going to need some embossing ink and you're going to need the WOW bonding powder. I'm going to be using this with some dark colored cardstock. I'm using some purple, pink and rose colored cardstock. The great thing about using foils is that they're opaque so they show up really well on dark cardstock. And I'm just showing you a selection of the foils I've got in my stash here. I think the blush and the pink are probably my favorites alongside the teal. I am a foil addict, so I love them all. So I'm starting out by adding my cardstock directly into my Misty. I'm going to be using a background stamp. This one is by Simon Says Stamp. And I've removed the center. I'm not going to be stamping that. You could, of course, stamp it separately and foil it in a different color if you so choose. I'm not going to be doing that this time, but it is a good idea for the future and one I might try. I'm adding the uh, dusty rose kind of coloured cardstock into my Misty, lined up the background stamp and then I'm going to be stamping it with WOW embossing ink. I only show one stamping here but I did do it two or three times just to make sure I got a good impression and I treated the cardstock with my powder tool first just to make sure I didn't get any bonding powder sticking where I didn't want it. I'm then using a coffee filter just to catch the bonding powder and I'm tipping it over the stamped impression just in the exact same way that you would with an embossing powder and then heating it up with my heat gun. And you'll see that when it's heated it goes clear, like almost like clear embossing powder. So this is the foil. You need some super sharp scissors. I'm using scissors that are typically used for cutting fabric to cut foil. I find it's the best type of scissors for cutting foil and you don't get it ruffling or ripping or tearing where you don't want it to. And I'm using the blush foil here. As I said, this is one of my favorites. It's a really pretty pale pink color. So I'm reheating the bonding powder with my gun and then straight away laying the foil over the top and just using a couple of fingers to gently rub over the impression and you will feel where the bonding powder is under the foil and this helps the foil to stick to that bonding powder underneath. And then when you peel it back, you'll see a beautiful foiled image left behind. Now don't worry if you missed any spots and I will say that the impression that you get using bonding powder is typically a little distressed. It's harder to get a perfect image but there are a few things I found along the way to help with that distressing and get it to be a little bit more clearer. So first off it's using the old reheating so you can go back in, reheat and then lay back your foil over the top and you will get more foil adhering where the bonding powder is showing. So I'm going to show you this again. This time I'm using the Catherine Pooler Flourishes background stamp. It's a thicker stamp. It's in terms of image, it's got more solid space. It's not as detailed and fine lined as the Simon Says stamp one. I've stamped it two or three times again, this time on a purple colored cardstock and I'm adding my bonding powder in the same way as before and then just heating it up. And I will add, it doesn't matter how long you leave between heating up the powder and adding the foil because you can go back in with your heat tool and reheat it. This time I'm using the silver foil. I haven't fully cut it to size. I'm going in and I'm adding the foil and you'll see that in a couple of areas it was a little bit more distressed than I would have liked. I must have left it a little bit too long, it cooled down a bit too much, but that's okay. I'm going back in with some more foil. I've heated up the powder again with my gun and this time I'm going in with a bone folder to burnish the foil onto the bonding powder. And what you'll see here is with the combination of extra heating and the burnishing, and I also waft it a little bit just to let it cool down while the foil is on the top. When I peel it back, you get a much clearer impression. And this is a much more solid stamp, so there's more areas to cover and foil. So you'll see this technique is actually much better than the first version I showed you. 
And this is what you're left with. It is still a little distressed, but I really like the look of it. And this technique doesn't have to be just background stamps. You can do this with any of your stamps in your stash. So I've pulled out the Dainty Botanicals by Pink Fresh Studio. Uh, this has a number of solid images and I'm stamping them all over my card panel to create my own background. You could of course do this with just one or two stamps in the center, however you see fit. And you can of course also die cut your foiled images with coordinating dies. So I'm stamping each of these images across my card panel to create my own background. I'm using four or five of the images from the set. And I actually think I prefer the look of the more solid stamps. So that's one of the reasons I went for this stamp set. And I'm going to be foiling this with pink foil. So I was looking for a tone on tone look for this one. I'm adding my bonding powder as I did before and heating it up. And then this time I've actually trimmed down my foil into smaller pieces because I'm going to be applying it in parts just to add more pressure. I thought that the smaller pieces actually might exert more pressure onto the stamped images. And I did find that this was another tip that did help and removes a little bit of the distressing. One quick tip, if you end up with foil where you don't want it, you can always go back in and remove it with a mono sand eraser. So to finish my cards, I did the panels down onto the same color of cardstock. With the purple one, I trimmed it down slightly to create an eighth of an inch border. That was only because I was a little bit off with my background stamping. And I like the way the um, inside of the cards coordinate with the front of the panels. And I'm going to be finishing off the cards really simply. I'm using these uh, dies from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Designs. They are the good look, thanks one and love you. And I've die cut the background piece of each die from a vellum and then the front main piece of the sentiment from the same cardstock because I still had a A2 size panel left. And I've also trimmed out these banners there. The die is also from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm using the coordinating sentiment set for each of the dies. And I'm stamping them in embossing ink and then heat embossing them with Wow Bright White Opaque Embossing Powder. I did treat each of these strips with my powder tool before I heat embossed them. I then trim them out and then pop them up on thin foam strips underneath the sentiments. You will see that each of the cards features the purple, the pink and the rose coloured cardstock. I interchange them just for a little bit of a different look between the three. And no embellishments were needed because the foil says it all. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel or give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click that bell to be reminded when I have a new video. All of the supplies I've used are in the description box below. And here's a few other videos you might enjoy. Have an awesome day. Bye.